I love how she's just like, here, go. <laughs> Never done this before. <laughs> oh, did we boop? Even? Yes, we booped. I don't think we booped on Twitter, uh, though. Well, no, we never boop on Twitter. Hang on, <laughs> I will tweet us out. Can't say his name. Hey, everybody. How's it going? We're going to wait a little bit to get more people in here. We're already live. <laughs> That's okay. They can wait like two minutes. Wow, that took me. That took me a while <laughs> to just do a retweet. <laughs> just just so everybody knows, Rach is not really here. It's just the ghost of Rach in the chat. Yes, she is with us in spirit. <laughs> spirit. <laughs> <laughs> it's very apropos given our discussion for tonight. Mm. Indeed. Are the people coming? We have like seven, seven people. Oh, that's good to know. Cause on my end, we're just showing three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I think you can get started, Jams. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Okay. <laughs> Greetings, curious crowd, and welcome to another episode of Nerds Are Us 2.0, our non-podcast podcast, where we take a closer look at our favorite ner nerd communities, put a spotlight on some amazing creators, and try to do our part to make fandom a better place. My name is Jams, and I'm joined by the lovely Ronnie, and our one of our very favorite guests to have back, the Foxy Fox. Hi. Shannon. It me. I was I was really kind of hoping that you were gonna say, hi, my name's Rach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean damn. Because I, I, I probably would have done that. <laughs> I could be. You don't know. <laughs> Yes. Rach, yeah, Rach is a ghost tonight. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, we know he, we, everyone loves Rach. Um, she's super, super busy, but um, she's she's listening. <laughs> she's uh, she's in the background. Um, so yeah, but she's she's just super busy with work, so she couldn't um, take some time off to uh, jump on mine. See, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So today it is uh, Mike Flanagan Appreciation Day, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but really we're we're talking about um, we wanted to talk about supernatural stuff. And in all honesty, like the past couple of years, our huge focus whenever we talk talk about supernatural things has been the Conjuring series. Uh, one because I'm obsessed with it, and I just constantly talk about it. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, you know, it's just, yeah, anyway, we're not going to talk on, on it because we'll just talk about that. So, um, uh, we were thinking about another, um, kind of grouping of things that, that we really, really enjoy in that particular subgenre of the overall horror genre. Horror. Um, and, uh, obviously we, we were pretty much obsessed to the second that Hill House dropped with Hill House and then um, the anticipation for basically any project that came out after that um, from Mike uh, via the flicks we were like just just give it just just give it we shall we shall take it any which way it comes mm -hmm. so um, luckily we got Bly Manor and then uh when did midnight mass drop was that last week last weekend yeah. last friday last friday okay 
So um, we are going to talk about all three series. We're going to leave Midnight Mass um, to the end. So if you guys uh, want to, if you haven't seen it and don't want any spoilers, and you can jump out. Um, but there, there will be spoilers. <laughs> Let's just say <laughs> yeah. that. If you haven't seen any of them, uh, feel free to lurk <laughs> or just mute us. <laughs> Um, or exit the premises entirely. That's totally up to you. <laughs> but stay um, here forever. Yes, but please stay forever. <laughs> um, oh, I think Rach did want us to mention that um, today is the last day of September. And um, so, you know, if you uh, haven't subscribed to us yet, but you, you're appreciating the, uh, the content, please, please come and join the family. Come and join the curious crowd. And as our dear Foxy, who is present, usually says, Subscriber dash. Subscription. <laughs> Subscription or motherfucking death. So, uh, there's that. <laughs> she will hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll give you foxy cuddles, so it might be worth it. <laughs> no, not because Halloween's coming. Now it's going to be like The Ring, where if you don't subscribe, I'm going to crawl out of your TV and be yep. like, why haven't you subscribed? Yep, you'll get a phone call. and. It, it'll be foxy saying <laughs> subscription or death it's true this is the and best thing have... i have ever heard <laughs> <laughs> then you just you have no choice otherwise she'll crawl out of your motherfucking computer screen that's right and that's it i'm very pale yeah. so like i'm already pretty ghost-like so <laughs> <laughs> creepy either way <laughs> oh goodness Okay, so, oh yeah, Rach is saying, uh, don't mute, just drop the volume to 1%. <laughs> so we're specific, <laughs> very specific guys. Um, okay, so on to the shenanigans of tonight. Shenanigans. Um, well, I mean, Foxy's here, so. <laughs> shenanigans. Shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> um, okay, so just a little bit of background on uh, Mike, because he is the creator, um, writer, director of these shows. Um, appropriately, he's from Salem. Is he really? So, yeah, he was born in Salem. Cool. Um, so he was born a freak uh, and basically destined to just focus on uh, horror, uh, because that's all he's done pretty much uh, since the start. And um, he, Same. I mean, being a creative and kind of just getting his like projects out there and stuff, he all, he actually had like a Kickstarter campaign at one point for one of his smaller projects and um, look at him now. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to go into all of the, uh, the deets, but if you guys are interested in reading up about him, feel free to Google. There's a lot of info on the wikis and uh, so on and so forth. Um, but he has, you know, obviously some big fans from, uh, like the likes of, uh, Mr. Stephen King and, um, a few other very popular horror influencers. Um, so I think that one of like the bigger projects that kind of put his name on the map before, um, his collaboration with Netflix started was Dr. Sleep, uh, cause that was a huge, huge project with a rather large cast including Ewan McGregor. So if no one has seen that, highly recommend. Um, she, Foxy was mentioning that um, with that kind of large production intro, he basically kind of set the tone that he's not shy about kind of pushing the limits of his audience and what they're comfortable with. Um, it's been a while, I think, since we've had someone that kind of does some pretty raw moments and um, no one's safe really. Cause I think in a lot of um, spooky shows that we watch nowadays, like even like slashers and, and such um, animals are kind of safe um, and children are safe, but not with Mike. <laughs> so, um, but he, he, he finds a kind of a nice balance though, because even though he has some really, really difficult, scenes um, in all of his projects, really, 
um, he balances everything out with kind of quite lengthy pieces of um, dialogue and um, just deeper, more psychological material, um, which is an interesting balance, really, because he's not solely focused on like the fluffier side of horror where there's just constant jump scares or other um, kind of uh, horror tropes that we're kind of used to just from from a visual and what your expectations are. This has been a plus for some people. This has been a minus for some people, which is a good place to be because you guys know how I personally feel about that. Have some people really like your shit. Have some people really hate your shit. You can't be for everybody. It's better for you to just be true to what your vision is and what it is that you want to accomplish and just put it out there and see how it flows. Um, if he was playing it too safe, we may not be talking about it. So here we are. So just a fair warning, if you haven't seen any of these again, um, and you do see them and you're like, I didn't really feel them, that's totally okay. But um, at least give them a shot, because I, I do think that they're uh, very different from what we're used to in terms of the genre. Yes. All right. Foxy. I know you're super Foxy. passionate about Haunting of Hill House. Foxy. So yes, I am. please tell the, tell the people why you're passionate about the haunting of hill house so i mean it's like it's a book it's but it's nothing like the book <laughs> really um it's like a, it's a heart it's a horror story like a, a ghost story with heart um i really like it because i just love all the characters like every single one of them i was like well, I can't say every single one of them. There's one character I didn't like, but <laughs> almost every single one of the characters, I was like, I love them. I love them and I don't want anything bad to happen to them ever, which, I mean, it's a horror series, so bad things do happen to them. So um, I don't know. I, like, it was like the perfect blend of like, it was scary. Like, I'm big on ghost stories. So like, I know that like, you can have like your your favorite out of all of his series and I think it's going to kind of go with what you like best I really really like good ghost stories and it's one of the best ones I've seen like as a series or as a movie um so yeah it's just like the perfect blend of like creepy and actually like scary and just a really good story and it had a lot of heart um yeah, I like it's just the best. It's literally, I think it's my favorite show of all time now, which previous to that it was Parks and Rec. So that's like a big deal. <laughs> it's a so, huge difference on her. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> so uh, yeah. we do have a question for you on who that is, who you don't <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to get yelled at for this because I already have. I don't like Shirley. Oh, Sorry. well, I mean, that's understandable, <laughs> though. I can um, I get why she acts the way she acts, but, and I think that I don't like her specifically because of, like, my personal experiences, probably. <laughs> um, but, oh, she, she drives, I can't, like, she makes me so mad when I watch scenes with her. I'm like, what is your yeah. problem? Yeah, so she yeah. bothers me. I think she's just so sure, like she's just, she's so convinced that she has all the answers and she knows all the things. And so she like, she doubles down. And I think, I think all of us just, especially right now, cause I rewatched it. I'm really, really sensitive or really, really triggered by anyone who decides to double down right now. <laughs> so right, I, I really reacted strongly to this rewatch of just like, why, why are you doubling down <laughs> right now? Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's also like she's what I try to do is be like she's grieving so like give her sure. give her a little bit of of breathing room for not liking her but I also like my big thing is I don't feel like if you're if something's going wrong in your life or you're upset about something or if you're sick or you've been through something whatever that doesn't give you the right to be mean to everybody around you. And I kind of feel like that's how she was. 
Um, Cause I mean, even specifically with Luke, like she was just so mean to him. Like, you know, and like, it's also the thing where like, you know, you don't know the situation unless you've been in it. So like, it's very realistic. It's very realistic. I know exactly why she's acting the way she's acting, but I'm still not okay with it. <laughs> right. right. Um, Jams, I was actually going to ask you, um, because because we we did just jump in um, quickly, just ta talking about uh, Foxy's passionate <laughs> reaction to to the Hill House, but um, you don't happen to have the tab open to just do like a brief synopsis of the show, do you? I believe I do. Awesome. Just in case anyone <laughs> needs a refresher, because it has it probably has been a while since some folks have uh, yes. have seen it. So, The Haunting of Hill House is an American supernatural horror, horror drama horror. television series created and directed by Mike Flanagan, produced by Amblin Television and Paramount Television for Netflix, and serves as the first entry in the Haunting Anthology series. It is loosely based on the 1959 novel of the same name by Shirley Jackson, the plot alternates between two timelines following five adult siblings whose paranormal experiences at Hill House continue to haunt them in the present day and flashbacks depicting events leading up to the eventful night in 1992 when the family fled from the mansion. The ensemble cast features, okay, I'm probably going to say this wrong, Michelle Huisman? <laughs> Elizabeth it's Michael. Well, it, it looks like Michelle, but I'll say Michael Huisman, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth Reeser, Oliver Jackson Cohen, Kate Siegel, and Victoria Pedretti as the siblings in adulthood with Carla Gugino, Gugino. And, he and Henry Thomas as parents Olivia and Hugh Crane, and Timothy Hutton appearing as an older version of Hugh. Stellar cast, can we just yes. say. The kid from E.T. is in it. I mean, yeah, like, how no. could you go wrong? Yes. Yeah. How could you go I wrong? Mean, I, think that, I think this was the first time I actually saw that Henry Thomas was back on the scene um, doing stuff. And I was just like, oh, look at you. Yeah, good job. But he, I, was, I found um, on the wiki on uh, Mike's page, uh, someone did uh, a recurring collaborators chart. And like, if you go down to the bottom, like every single actor that he's worked with um, and all of his projects are like in a, in a graph and like they've got multiple X, X's on like all the projects that he's been in or they've all been in. And the majority of them all have at least two projects that they've done with him. Uh, and Henry in particular has six. So he's done six projects with Mike and yes, they're all spooky. Oh. Um, and so, and, and the majority of them are actually before Hill House. So um, Henry's been at it and just, we just didn't know. <laughs> um, wow. So yeah, it's crazy. I um, but I, I do, it, it is funny seeing like the directors and like just kind of consistently working with, um, collaborating with uh, like their people, like the people that they know that they can, that they have a good time with, I guess, and then they just keep working with them. Um, Anywho, so uh, Jamie Jams, what is it that you loved so much um, about Hill House? And as a as a huge horror fan, what was it that kind of separated it for you? Um, aside from how how much I loved the characters, because I I did I loved most of the characters. It is very hard to scare me, and the scares were a plenty in this show. Like they they didn't just use jump scares. They they know how to build a an effective scare that leaves you feeling like oh my god, <laughs> it's not just a quick jump out of your seat moment. It's actually horrifying. Yeah, and. After watching the show and learning about how many ghosts were in the background, going through my second time, I am enjoying 
actively looking for all the ghosts in the background. So that's kind of fun. It's like fucking hunting for Pokemon, guys. Like, if you just want to, like, just watch the show, just have it on and just, like, see if you can find all the fucking ghosts. Because how many are there? There's, like, 50 in the Something background? Like that, yeah. And it's almost unsettling when you notice one in the background. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> I feel like the ones that he did in Bly Manor are actually more obvious and noticeable than the ones that are in Hill House. I think the ones in Hill House are a little bit more subtle and hidden visually. Because um, when I did rewatch Bly, I saw the um, like the old school uh, plague mm-hmm. doctor gear, um, like fucking everywhere. Like you'd see yeah. like the beak just randomly in the shadows. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, I didn't notice that before. But um, but yeah, the ghosts in Hill House, I think, were a little bit more um, subtle. Um, okay, so one of one of the huge things that kind of um, separated Hill House for me um, was how it was filmed, actually, because um, I think it was one of the few, or maybe one, I should say, one of the first times, because I, I saw the same technique used. Uh, recently in uh, Malignant, which is um, making the environment that you're in a character. So, mm-hmm. which is more relevant in Hill House than it is in Malignant, yet is still a cool tool to use. So, um, Hill House, obviously, the whole fucking house is the damn character <laughs> um, and is the cause of everything. But, um, they have a cool uh, one shot um, that they did that really stuck in my brain where you can see people walking from one floor to the other and they don't cut. So um, obviously they built this enormous um, grand staircase and at least the multiple floors in order to capture the entire movement. And there's quite a few shots where you're, where you're, following the characters as they're running around the house, but you're kind of slightly overhead, uh, but you're seeing the flow between rooms and hallways. And there are some instances where a character goes from the future to them recalling the past when they walk through a doorway and they're in another building and they're walking into the house. It's just fucking art, okay? Yeah. And it's it, it brings me great joy because it's such a simple thing, but I I love that shit because I'm just like, you know, it's the it's just it's the simple things, you know. He didn't have to overcomplicate that. He didn't have to do a hard cut and be like, you know, ten years ago. <laughs> it's just like you're just walking from one building to the other and um you see the the past version of that same character and you're like, okay, here we are. And it's easy to follow. So um, beautiful stuff. The gothic feel is absolutely gorgeous. I feel like a lot of the costume choices and the way some people were shot, like he he just, he really knows how to capture these actors in their best. I, I don't think I've ever seen Carla Gugino's like look more beautiful in anything she's ever done. And she's a gorgeous woman. But mm-hmm. she looks exceptionally magnificent in Hill House. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's and it's a lot because because there's there's a lot of beautiful people in the show. Um, Mike's wife included Kate Siegel, who um, is probably she ha- she I think I agree with you, Foxy. I think she may be my favorite character in Hill House. She's just she she does. She's just it's a Theo. it's a beautiful character. Yeah, Theo Theo's it's it's a gorgeous character um but uh but yeah so uh, there there's a lot of little things that i think for me as a horror fan um kind of separated it separated that experience um for me and made it special um okay so favorite characters why theo (laughs) i go back and forth between honestly theo and luke Mm -hmm. Luke, um I mean, I just, I don't know. Like, Luke, I, like, it's very much that I'm like, you can tell he's a nice person and he's just struggling. And like, how could your, you know, like, how could your heart not like go out to him? So, um, plus, oh my God, the little kid who played him 
mm-hmm. was just the cute who's in the WandaVision show now. Um yeah. just the cutest little kid like ever in the world. He was so cute. Um so yeah, I think with Luke it's just you know, you want to love and protect him always. With Theo, she's just so real. Like every single reaction that she has to everything is just so realistic and so messy and I I guess that's probably why I like her the most because I that's that's like a thing with me I really like nice but messy characters and she's you know she's really messy like the thing she like falls over in the funeral episode I think it is and like just the fact that they like showed that I was like I don't know. I don't know if I can really explain it. She's just so real to me. And I love her a lot. And she's hot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I just can't. I'm not even going to talk about how gorgeous she is. But anyway, (laughs) Sam's. Yeah, I agree. Mine are the same. Theo and Luke. Luke is just just like... about them. Well, yeah. And I mean, Oliver is... He, he's hot anyway but um there's something about luke like he's just he's got the, even though he has his issues he has this innocence about him still and it's like you want to you want to help him and give him a hug mm-hmm. and keep him away from the tall man oh yeah the tall man was freaky. <laughs> and i love theo she's just so raw and mm-hmm. real yeah and also, like, just kind of juxtaposing her, like, having all of these walls up because she's so sensitive um, with how, like, like touching, just by touching things, she can, like, read an entire person and an entire history and to see all of these visions. Um, and so she's so rough around the edges. Um and not trusting of people. And I don't blame her at all because of that gift that she has. Um, so it's just, it's, it's, I, I liked that kind of really harsh balance of, um, of both those extremes. Cause there's no, there's no like, there's no in between there. It's just like, either I, I know everything about you and I have to be like totally cool with being vulnerable with that. Uh, no, <laughs> I refuse. So I, I really, I really appreciate that about her, um, and she's gorgeous. Um, Oliver's cool and all, but I have a huge bone to pick with him when it comes to Bly. So we'll get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> but anyway, um, did you lose your audio, Foxy? No, my mic turned off by itself. Oh. Ooh. <gasps> it's the ghost. <laughs> like the button just came up i was like why am i muted (laughs) okay so um do you i don't know i watched it recently so this may be an unfair question to you guys uh but you guys can tell me to fuck off if it is um (laughs) (laughs) um do you remember which episode distinct episode is your favorite of hill house yeah of hill house I know which one I want to say, but I don't know the number or anything like that. No, okay. I just don't know if it if it really is. So oh, okay. I want to say like the funeral episode only because like I watch like the behind the scenes of that and it's literally like three shots. Like the entire episode is literally only like something crazy like three shots. So like I've gone back and watched it just to like notice things about it so I feel like but I feel like that's more technical um yeah so I don't know if it's like I don't know I don't know if that's my favorite I really like the Theo like because I like they're kind of like based on each like person yeah for a while I really like the Theo episode um I don't know if I can pick one I guess I'll go with the funeral one just because I was so impressed by it. 
but I don't know if it's true. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Everyone else can answer. Yeah. Jam. <laughs> That's so hard because there's so many moments from different episodes that I just love. Uh, there, there are moments in the very first episode too that I, I love, like the whole how Steve has never actually seen a ghost, and then he thinks mm -hmm. that Nell is in his apartment, and his dad tells him that she's that she's dead and slowly her face starts to turn into this creepy dead thing and you're like oh my god <laughs> yeah yeah I, um i'm gonna agree 100 percent with uh prog in the chats and it's um uh, the bent neck lady reveal. Mm -hmm. I feel like that one, mm -hmm. when it happened, just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, was that the second to last one? Um, I Did think that? it was the, I, I don't remember if it was the end of five. It was um, that early? I, th I, think it, I think it was the end of five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Prague, for, for uh, confirming that. Yeah. So it's the end of five. Um, and I just remember, like, there, there are, you know, when like, I don't, I can't help doing this because I'm, I don't know, my my brain just works a certain way where I'm like, I'm trying to figure shit out. I can't just watch something. <laughs> um, so I'm like, if if and a lot of times, you do end up like figuring something out. Um, Jams and I were actually talking about that with Midnight Mass because there there was a couple of things where it was like, oh yeah, we figured that out from the <laughs> beginning, but um uh so there there are certain things that are kind of obvious while you're watching something but that was one thing where i was like because you don't see much about the benton lake lady you just keep hearing about her mm -hmm. um and so making that final connection i was like this is the best show i've ever seen <laughs> as soon as i saw that and i like not knowing and i like it when i can be surprised like that just that again just brings me great joy so um so yeah, that that has to be that has to be my favorite. Um, the kind of overall theme of Hill House of like the fear of letting go and losing the people that you love, um, and. I feel like all of his shows kind of ha share the same theme of we all make our own hell. Like we all torture ourselves one way or another. Um, and I like that idea um, just because of just how we react to things. I think all, all of his characters have that. And I feel like the bent neck lady specifically was like a literal <laughs> representation of that because it's like as soon as she dies and you see her going from scene to scene as she goes back and revisits all of these parts of her life she's haunting herself mm -hmm. her her past even though it's her future her past is literally haunting herself and it's just it's it is so poetic and sad and beautiful all at once and um it's a lot <laughs> yeah it's just a lot um so i i think the a fair warning for everyone too if you're watching these shows is like they're they are supposed to make you think um i i don't think you can watch these shows and just be like and not start kind of analyzing stuff um yes if you are capable of doing that wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't, you can't like put the show on and be scrolling on your phone and not paying attention. You need to yeah. put the phone down yeah. and watch the damn show. Yeah. 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 I think the good okay. thing too is that I get, I don't know if this is like a pandemic thing or just a me thing, but I feel like a lot of the times now when there's like twists or like a complicated plot, I don't understand. Like, 
for an example, like Loki, I was like, what is happening? I don't understand who's that supposed to be. Like it, it, like it took me a while to kind of like understand what was happening. But I feel like with his shows, it's, it makes you think, but it's not complicated. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's, and, and I mean, we're not at that point yet, but like Midnight Mass in particular, I was like, oh, like this is like a smart show, but I don't feel stupid watching it. <laughs> And yeah. like, yeah, I just, it's, it's art and it's a thought piece, but for like everyone, it's not one of those like artsy fartsy complicated things. Yeah. Ho holier than thou. Um, yeah. If you don't get it, you're fucking stupid. Blah, yes. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. He's not snooty about it. Like I feel like Mike and his, and all of his collaborators, cause I'm sure he has a few, quite a few writers um, with him. At least that's my assumption. I don't, I don't really know, but um whoever it is that he's collaborating with, I feel like they do a really, really good job of presenting their idea and holding your hand and taking you along for the ride and like doing a really, really good job of kind of just explaining things to you uh, while you go and, and explaining their thought process, I think yeah. too. So it's like, it's like having a conversation yeah. watching his shows. And I, and I appreciate that too, because it's not like, as you say, it's for, it's for everyone. It's not for, um, you know, smarty pants smarty pants it's just like how can i say this in a pc way <laughs> um okay so to the more controversial point that i feel i always have a hard time with i do not like the fucking ending of hill house okay yeah same i just don't um but uh and i, I don't remember if we've had this discussion or not uh, before Foxy, but how how okay. do you feel about the ending? I, f I feel fine about it. Um, I don't know. I didn't really have a problem with it. I'm what, like, why? Because, like, you guys both don't like it, right? Why? Why? We okay, have had so, this conversation, but remind me. <laughs> well, yeah, because that, that's the thing, because I can't remember what we discussed last time. <laughs> um, but it's me, because I can't remember anything. Um, my my initial reaction, I know when I when I very very first watched it, I remember thinking that the transition of like we're fighting the house, we're fighting the house, where this house is torturing us, um, but we're actually torturing ourselves, and it's using all of the the stuff that we torture ourselves with to torture us, um, to all of a sudden being like. Um, oh, it's the solution for us to be together forever at the end of all things, and we're going to be happy here, and um, la-di-da. It was, it was that, that transition for me was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. um, why, are, why are we suddenly okay with the house? <laughs> um, so I don't know, it, and, but that was like the first time I watched it. This, and, and I've seen Hill House multiple, multiple times, and um, have had pretty much made my mind up on uh, that ending. But this recent um, time that I watched it, I think I, I found a little bit more understanding in it in the sense of just that family dynamic. And because of everything that they had gone through up to that point, um, I think they had kind of made peace with it um, and themselves. And so I think they they started kind of just appreciating the gift, I guess, that the house had to offer with like once they did pass away, they had somewhere to go where they could all be together. La di da. Um, I still I'm still grappling with that, but um, but I get it for the most part. Um, at least the um, the feeling of it, I suppose. Um, cause they had all been lacking that throughout their lives. Cause they had lost, they, they were disconnected for yeah. so long. Um, and I think just, just for me in the show, I had lost sight of that. Cause obviously when you're watching the show, it's just, it's just a few hours for you. It's not like the, the amount of years that it's supposed to be for the individual characters. But, but yeah, there was, there was just a slight disconnect for me with that ending. Mm -hmm. Jams, okay. do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Like, just feeling like they're stuck at the end in the house. It just felt very unsatisfying. 
like the yeah, ghosts you mean are stuck in the house uh well yeah and the cranes that are in the red room at the end yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I i don't know there, there was just something about it it's funny because like i didn't see it that way at all like mm -hmm. first of all before i even get into that i read a theory online that someone like pointed out something in one of the last scenes that like they thought indicated that like it was fake like it wasn't really happening like they were still just they hadn't left the house which i didn't get interesting like yeah. at all like at all I don't know. Okay. If I find it again, I'll I'll send it to you guys. But um, yes, yeah, I don't know. Like I think the way that um, that I kind of looked at it is that they like broke the cycle, like with being able to like get to Luke and everything and have that big moment with Nell. Like I feel like there was a sacrifice, but it broke the cycle. So. I don't know. Like, I didn't really look at it as like everything's peachy in the end. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of was yeah. just like, okay, like they broke the cycle and that's it. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, because it did. It did feel like a. Um, I, I did. I did. I did feel. Me. I did interpret it as kind of hokey, like a hokey ending. Um, but uh, but I think I don't know. I don't know why I. I that's interpreted fair. it that way because I, I norm I normally don't but for some for some reason I was just like this is cheesy <laughs> so, um but yeah so who knows um any final thoughts on uh on Hill House before we move on to Bly because we only technically only have 15 minutes to talk about <laughs> Bly and Mass but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to go a little bit over time because uh yeah <laughs> so uh any last thoughts on Hill? Go watch it. Yeah, spooky. Yeah, it's very. If you scary. watch, <laughs> if you have, if you just choose to watch one, and you want actual, like, I feel like out of all three of them, Hill House is this is probably the scariest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, by far, okay. I think. Yeah. So if you want some proper scares. There's yeah. one particular jump scare you will never get over. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. I, like, it's, it's, a, it's a big one. <laughs> I audibly, I just, I, it's been a long time since I like, I usually just do like the jolt thing, but that one like got an audible, like what the fuck out of me <laughs> when it happened. So yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, okay. On to Bly. Um, let's see. Let me pull up the synopsis oh that's whole house based on another book kind of yes. yes loosely based on another book the turn of the screw by henry james uh let's see but also includes other elements either based on james's other works or created for the show um which uh mike and Netflix actually tweeted out like a little um, introductory video before the show came out talking about how it was a gothic romance and um, how he did take elements from these books and he actually did list them. So um, that'd be a good thing for you guys to go check out. It should still be on um, the Bly Manor uh, Twitter account, I imagine, um, in case you guys do want to visit, revisit the books. Um, Okay, like its predecessor, the series follows a nonlinear narrative. The, the haunting of Bly Manor follows the events occurring in a uh, countryside manor in the United Kingdom, Ugh. mostly upon the arrival of a young American hired as an au pair for the two children living at Bly, and who is unaware that the manor is haunted. Uh, it stars Victoria Pedretti again, Oliver Jackson Cohen again, Amelia Eve, Tania Miller, who fucking steals the show. Uh, they introduce Raul Coley, who now um, is also in Midnight Mass and is the hottest man ever. Um, Tahir Sharif, Amelia B. Smith, uh, Benjamin Evan Ainsworth, and again, Henry Thomas. 
uh, of course, you get Kate Siegel and Carla Gugino as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Kate is also exceptional in it, even though she doesn't come in until closer to the end. Oh, good Lord, this show. Okay, so who wants to start with general thoughts on Bly? Not me. I want to hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> Sam, do you want to start with general thoughts on Bly? Um, general thoughts on Bly? Yeah, like how how did it make you feel? Or did you have like expectations after having seen Hill House? Yeah, I I was definitely expecting some more scares, some spooky ghosties and stuff like that. It it still had its scary moments for sure, but it was definitely not the same kind of scary as hill house was um Great. the kids were phenomenal mm -hmm. <laughs> um emily b smith is also the voice of peppa pig so every time that she was <laughs> saying absolutely splendid all i could picture was peppa pig because <laughs> ayla really used cute. to watch that cartoon <laughs> <laughs> And the kid that played her brother was very talented too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, the, the, I, he's really good at casting again, and um, obviously the, these these people get to share their talent as far as to just how flexible they are in in kind of shedding and putting on these new skins, because um, the characters that they play are drastically different from the ones that they played in. Um, Hill House. So it's it's a it's a very similar an anthology situation like American Horror Story where they use a lot of the same folks. Um which is which is cool. Again, it, it's it's cool projects for actors because they get to really show their versatility and, and all that jazz. Um Oliver. Oh. Oliver, dude. Okay. I this we've talked about before, so I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> he's a beautiful man. I, he's yes. talented as fuck. The work that he did in Hill House is absolutely exceptional. The stuff that he did in the show is great. It completely pulled me out. Well, okay. So the series starts, and you hear uh, Carla uh, speaking, and she has on a Northern English accent. And I'm like, what's happening? Um, it's not great, but okay. And then, um, Oliver comes into the scene and he's Scottish. <laughs> and I'm like, sh you should be better at that. I think, I feel like you <laughs> should be better at that. Um, cause that country's just North of yours, <laughs> but, um, okay. So it took it took me out, and 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 I don't know if it's it's and and this is super snobby of me. I understand, <laughs> but I, I feel like it's just because we're so exposed to all of those um, accents now because of just how much content is coming from overseas. That it's just like I'm I'm actually starting to pick up on it. Similar to like our regional accents, like you can tell when someone is from certain parts of of our huge ass country, but um it it it's just, it was just very distracting for me but uh oliver specifically like dude like <laughs> i don't understand and maybe i missed this but like was there a reason that they made him scottish because he has like he has a british accent like he's like naturally like why would you not just let him speak right like there wasn't like a story thing that i missed where like he had to be scottish right like no I don't no. understand that choice. Yeah, no. There was there was there was no real reason to make him Scottish except for them being like, oh well let's just let's just sprinkle this in so we have a little bit more representations of the Isles. It's just like you might as well just I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Um and also I, I didn't appreciate too that like he wasn't a good dude. No. It's like why are you making the bad dude Scottish, yo? <laughs> like 
that's I don't appreciate this. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Just that it was just an it, they were odd choices. Just odd, odd yeah. choices. <laughs> yeah, I had some issues with the fact that his, his character and his lover uh, were, tr were trying to take over the bodies of these children so they could be together. And these children are brother and sister. That's not okay. No. <laughs> No Good point. Good yeah, point. That, that, that's a much bigger detail. Yeah, <laughs> it's a much bigger detail. Is it? What does it say that the accent bothered me more? <laughs> you were too distracted by the accent to really <laughs> think true. about the fact that they were brother and sister. <laughs> this, this is very true. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's tough. That's <laughs> that's a, that's a tough choice as well um <laughs> rachel's like yikes yikes <laughs> it made okay. me feel icky <laughs> no yeah you're, you're you're totally right and i it actually should. that's a good thing <laughs> i feel lucky. like it it hit me more this last time that i watched it this past weekend um where i was like wait how would this work exactly <laughs> um so yeah no it's just it's just it's odd um i i felt like with with uh with bly they tried i think they tried to do a little bit too much maybe with the story um it felt a lot more um dense i still enjoyed it very much and i thought it, it flowed pretty well but um I don't feel like the individual characters, um, their individual hauntings tied well together. I thought they were very singular. Um, and then they all just happened to be in this house and then impacted by um, Kate's ghost, mm -hmm. uh, the Lady of the Lake, which was technically the, the main point. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, um, and I already forgot her name because this is me. <laughs> Viola. No, no, no. Um, Pedretti's character. Oh, hey. da Danny. Thank you. Um, Danny's ghost of her like ex fiance. Um, cool effect. Mm -hmm. He probably gave me the most jump scares early on. Um, but. And I understand, like, it's, like, like, herself holding her, like, holding herself back because her guilt is holding her back and all of this. Again, everyone torturing themselves because uh, that's, like, a recurring thing. But um, I just, that had nothing to do with anything, like, it, overall. Um, that was just her. Um, I, I thought it was nice how that mirrored... Um, Raul's character's uh, kind of internal battle with um, him taking care of his mom and her kind of holding him back and him having to move to Bly to take care of her and like how he had all this potential that he kind of had to put aside. Um, there, there's, there's a lot going on again with each individual character and it's all very, very rich. Um, but I just, I felt like there was just too much in it um jams what, what do you think yeah there were a lot of sub stories to the main story so it made it a little a little difficult to keep up with at times um my favorite episode i think was probably the tale of the two sisters that i don't know what it was about that episode but it just that one really stuck with me yeah yeah yeah, that, that felt like its own show too, because like mm -hmm. you, it's it's com that one was it wasn't black and white, but it was like sepia toned, something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and it was about like just the the how the house became haunted. So that's Kate's ghost being introduced, and um, that whole that her stubbornness, and um, 
her just basically just not wanting to leave and wanting to basically have control over all of the circumstances and um and i mean eventually just screwing herself out of any kind of um crossing over i guess mm -hmm. she was just kind of stuck um and then uh proceeding to murder everybody because <laughs> she just walked around the manor every night and just killing people because that was her thing um did you have any big surprises like you did with hill house i think um hannah hannah gross i think her story really surprised me what do you think shannon she was my favorite part of the show mm -hmm. by like a large amount. I, her episode was my favorite. Um, Same. I loved her. I like kind of what you guys said. I, I think we didn't get enough time like we did in Hill House with all the characters because I wanted to really like them. And what I saw of them, I really liked. Um, yeah. But I just didn't feel like I knew them well enough to not that I didn't care, but like kind of I didn't care enough. Um, with the exception of like Hannah, when they finally gave her her episode, because really, like, I feel like we just even with Owen, like, I feel like we just touched on him a minute. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, like, we didn't really see anything about his life. Like, he right. talked a little bit about it, but that was it. Like, I honestly didn't care as much about like the kids and like the whole like ghost story there and like I like a lot of it I just was like I want to see Danny and Jamie and I want to see Owen and Hannah and these are the characters yeah. I care about and I'm not getting anything about them right so yeah it just felt a little too messy and story heavy there was a lot I liked about it like it wasn't terrible but it was hard going in from Hill House being like, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hannah by far was just the best. She sold the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was just yeah. amazing. Like, give her a whole show, honestly, at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, uh, props to Tania and um, Rahul, to, who, like, their, their work was exceptional. I mean, just Owen's monologue at the at the bonfire. I feel like that. Again, it, it's just um, it's a very if it's a very long uh, monologue, but it's not enough, and you want more um, in the show for sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that entire episode of um, Mrs. Gross is just. It's it's comparable to the bent neck lady, but not as like. Oh my god, um, it, hers actually made me more sad because yeah. I felt that the way they treated it was a perfect example of what dementia looks like, uh, which is m my biggest fear, um. And it, it was just a lot because I started wondering that earlier on in the series because she would do little quirky things where I was just like, she's forgetting certain things. She's like popping up randomly. Like it just it just felt off. And I was like, she's too young for that. But um, there is early onset. So I was like, Ugh, is, there, is this where we're going? This is going to be really difficult. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that whole that whole thing of just her not realizing and just popping up in different periods um, and not, not having like a linear timeline. It's just, it's just terrifying to me. Um, and it was, and it was really, really heartbreaking and she was amazing in it. So, so yeah, I wish, I wish we could have seen more of her as well. Yeah. Agreed. Um, this particular ending jams how do we feel about this ending i liked this ending it made me feel warm and fuzzy <laughs> <laughs> foxy uh half and half i liked most of the ending but like can we please stop killing off happy gay couples like can we please had enough of it <laughs> 
just let them be happy yeah that I didn't like I was like this is bullshit yeah, I can agree with that <laughs> um so I didn't like that but the rest of it you know with the wedding and all that other stuff that was good but I can, I can, I can see that. Yeah, I can totally see that. I did feel more satisfied with this ending, um, even though it it was full of cheese. It was a cheesy ending, mm -hmm. um, but it felt appropriate for some reason. But maybe, maybe because the the tone was so, it was pretty consistent. Um, it was. I, I didn't. I don't feel like it was as hard of a contrast as it was with Hill House for me. Um, so I think it was just easier for me to to swallow. Plus they used um, I Shall Believe, which every time I hear that song, I always think of Roswell. <laughs> Cause I'm old, but anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone have any comments on Bly Manor that we should touch on or uh, can we move on so that we can at least use 10 minutes for <laughs> uh, Midnight Mass? Can I just scream for 10 minutes? Like, sure. Just like, ah, it was so bad. <laughs> oh Take us to church. <laughs> All right. Oh, sweet Jesus. I don't even know where to start with this. Okay. Um, you guys have absolutely no idea how, like, I, I, I've spent a good three days wondering how the fuck to talk about this show. <laughs> um, okay, so mini series seven episodes long just fyi guys um starring zach guilford kate again um hamish and glader who for fuck's sake hamish um raul's back being hot as ever um henry thomas is in the mix per use uh plot centers on an isolated island uh community that experiences supernatural events after the arrival of a mysterious priest um guys <laughs> can we touch on a really superficial thing first sure so in reviews for this they said that uh he's the new hot priest and like no <laughs> like no no offense to What's his name? Hamish. Hamish. No offense to him. He's a very good looking man and he did a great job. But compared to Fleabag. Yes, I was just going to say that. <laughs> he is not the new hot priest. Yeah. There is no comparison there. Like, mm -mm, I like no. read that in a review and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Anyway, okay. We can well, talk about I, stuff I now. mean, well, whoever wrote that missed the com missed the point of hot priest from fleabag the whole reason hot priest is hot priest is because he saw fleabag yeah there is nothing sexier than a character showing an audience that they are 100 percent like seen and accepted for all that they are because that is all women want <laughs> therefore he is hot priest yes uh Hamish's priest is not like that. <laughs> no, so. like there's not like even if he's like a good looking guy, like uh, there's no point in the series where I was like, "Ooh, he's being sexy." Like I was <laughs> like, "He's terrifying." Like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No. People are attracted to venom. I mean, you <laughs> do you, but <laughs> that's a whole other thing. <laughs> um, a whole different I, episode. <laughs> I cannot find a, a priest hot if he can't tell what a fucking vampire is i'm sorry <laughs> like if you don't like if you study if you're so devoted and studied scripture and you don't know what an angel is supposed to look like i worry for you <laughs> that's not what an angel is supposed to look like so um that was one thing that was really difficult for me to swallow i was like angel yeah. What are you smoking? Yo? Last I knew, angels don't suck your blood. <laughs> they don't suck your blood, and they don't look like that. Like, where are the feathers? <laughs> like, why is it all skin? <laughs> it's got claws and shit. Like, no. <laughs> like, 
I don't understand how that computed. And so like, I was like, that was just really difficult for me, but whatever. Um, Jams and I had that moment where, um, we, we, we were both like, oh, that's the same priest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I figured was like, it out by the third episode, like yeah. way, way at the beginning of the episode. Like, yeah, that's the same like, guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that was pretty obvious. Not, but again, those are just small, small little details. Um, the, Okay, let me ask this general question because I'm I'm trying to find a good way to ask about like what do you, what do you think the overall goal of this fucking show is <laughs> to you anyway as individuals your opinion of what you think this the the the, the point of the show is I'm gonna let Shannon take this <laughs> uh, uh I took it I mean a few things. Um, I think there's, there's a hint of like, who's actually the monster and who's actually the man is, is in there. Um, but I thought it was such like a perfect comparison, I guess, I don't know, of religion right now. And specifically Christianity right now, not even because most of it is about Catholicism which man, he got it down. Um, like I went to Catholic school most of my life. So I was like, wow, this is, this is my childhood. Um, yeah, I think, I think that it's, I, I mean, just talking about how he um, thought that it was an angel. I mean, the way I looked at that, it was like, okay, that's a perfect example of how people who call themselves Christians hate people for whatever reason like that's that's equal to the amount of sense that it makes you know like you say that you're all about loving everybody you're you're basing yourself off of a man who clearly loved everybody but you hate people because of who they love or what they look like or what religion they're like they are are a part of um so yeah I think for me it was the the bigger picture was just a direct comparison to what's happening with religion, how people are just blindly following other people and not looking at what's reality and just turning off common sense altogether and essentially being sheep. So that's how I took it. Um, there is, you know, they touch on like alcoholism and stuff. So there's some of that in there, but I think the, the religion stuff obviously was the bigger deal. Jams. Yeah, it was very, very religious heavy, very, very churchy. Um, it made me feel very reaffirmed in my, my own spiritual beliefs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know that not all Christians are the way that they were depicted in this show but sure yeah quite a few are and it's terrifying mm -hmm. um and it it kind of triggered some of some of my upbringing I was brought up in a catholic home and granted my my parents weren't as extreme but the the older generation like my grandparents and great aunts and uncles some of them were pretty extreme so that kind of kind of was like a ugh, I'm glad I got out of that <laughs> um I hated Bev oh my god <laughs> yeah Bev she was just the worst and to think that like a character like Joe Colley who I didn't really like or care about in the beginning because he was like a raging alcoholic by the end of his part in the story I was actually kind of sad to see him go because he was trying he was yeah. making a difference in his life and yeah um yes uh, agreed with the uh, pure fucking social commentary <laughs> I feel like Mike was just like 
one minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, just was like, you know, like. It, it is just a literal representation of just a shit show that's going on right now because it, it touches on everything. It just it like fanaticism. Is rampant. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, and um, one of my favorite things is um, the uh, use of scripture to make an excuse for the most horrible things. That is my favorite thing. I like <laughs> screamed every time Bev pulled that out. Like anytime she quoted scripture, I was like, oh my God, he's such a good writer. <laughs> he's so good at this. <laughs> But it's just it, it it's just like and and I was having this conversation with my sister because she just finished it and she was just like the the fanaticism and just the the doubling down that it takes with such confidence to be like this is what this means this is exactly what this means and this means that this is what we have to do and it's just like just the surety behind it it's just like the audacity. <laughs> it's just it, it like to me just is is mind blowing. Um, shout out to um, Samantha Sloyan, who uh, was actually um, Steve's wife in Hill House. Um, mm -hmm. So she had a very very small role in Hill House, um, oh. and <laughs> is Bev in um, this and completely has stole the show by being the most punchable face on the planet um, <laughs> she needs to get an award because there's yes. like you hated her like yeah. you, there's no way that you could not hate her no yeah yeah so uh shout out to her for doing such a such a good job um i hope um there aren't any crazies out there who like start sending her death threats for being a horrible <laughs> character <laughs> But I wouldn't doubt it because there's a uh, crazies on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. So, yeah. um, anywho, be nice to the actors. It's not, they're just, it's, it's a show guys. It's fake. <laughs> um, spread the word. Cause I know you guys aren't, but spread the word. Um, so anyway, yeah, shout out, shout out to her. Um, Riley. Um, oh. I, that was really, really hard. Um, but it was also, I feel like. A lot of this show, similar to Joe uh, from Jams's mention, the people who are really, really damaged in the show that actually show physical signs uh, of addiction and are trying to make amends for wrongs that they've um, committed um, are the good people on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and everything that happened to Riley, one, I, and I think that's probably when Jams messaged me because she was ahead of me when she was watching it. She's like, I hate this show. Yep. <laughs> was that the, I'm assuming that was, that was the point. Yeah. <laughs> and between that and Aaron's miscarriage, I was like, I was feeling quite broken at that point. I was right. like, why? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, just oh my god! But his his decision, that strength, because you don't know what's going to happen. You're like, okay, he he's turned. Um, he uh, he takes her on that boat in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, there are multiple ways this can go um what is he gonna decide and then you know he tells her the whole thing and i was like fully expecting him to pounce at one point did I you really like, i did there was a point where i was like it was after he finished telling the story and she was like okay you, and she's detailing it she's like okay so you brought me out here and um this just shows my trust issues though shannon that's all it does because <laughs> she was just like you brought me out here um, I trust you. And I was like, just trust him. <laughs> but that was just, that's just me. Just, just instinctually. I was like, why, why are you telling, why? <laughs> and, um, so I was just like, you know, this, this is a perfect opportunity for him to just be like, um, 
but then you know when when you realize that it's about that the sun's about to rise and he's going to show her unequivocally that what he was saying was true and he was gonna allow himself to burst into flames i like it just i was broken like i had to like stop after that episode for like at least 30 minutes and like take a step away and just be like okay i have no idea what's gonna happen (laughs) i need to accept it (laughs) i have no control over what i'm watching and uh, mike did it again so um yeah it was it was it was a lot I, i don't i don't think i'd had a reaction like that to a character um, deciding to do something in a really, really long time. And I think it, it was definitely one of those things where it's just like, okay, if we can see more examples of this, I may keep my faith in humanity. <laughs> so, oh, but it's so, yeah. fiction. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the way that they shot his death scene, it was so heart-wrenching because they almost made you feel like for a second that it wasn't real because they cut away to their their moment where they're you know on the couch and whatever and then all of a sudden it cuts back and he's burning up and falling apart and she's screaming screaming bloody murder oh that was a lot yeah i will say i at no point once he was turned did I think he was going to end up bad Do it. because he's an alcoholic. So he is used to fighting that, that hunger urge. every single day. Like as soon as that happened, like when that episode ended where he got turned, I turned to Chris. I was like, he's going to be fine. He's, I was like, everyone else is not going to be fine, but he's going to be fine because he's, he's an alcoholic. He knows what that feels like. He's used to fighting that. So when they went out on the boat, I didn't know like what was going to happen. Like I didn't think of the sunrise or anything like that, but I, there was yeah. no point where I was like, uh, like I didn't think he was going to hurt her at any point. So, which I thought was such an amazing part of the story. For like, sure. you know, like to, I don't know. He's just, he's such a good writer. He's such a good writer. Yeah that strength of character showing that strength of character and like you said what it takes of, of him realizing having been an addict uh for a very very long time and recognizing the kind of hunger that i've been fighting previously i'm not going to be able to fight this so i just need to stop um it's too much <laughs> it's just too much yeah. um okay other high points um Again, I feel like everything they give Raul is just, um, he's just so, so good. Um, he broke my heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the church. Yeah. Like, that was really sad. Yeah, everything going on with his son and all, that, all of that was a lot. Um, his speech at the school gathering. Mm-hmm absolutely necessary i'm actually wondering um how many people um if it how many people this was like their the first time they heard that explanation and we're probably actually like probably i'm i'm hoping that it got through to to at least some who haven't like gone out of their way to to learn the difference between um um the quran the the torah and the bible and the yeah. reason behind the whole like king james and all that every time he was talking about because there's been so many hands on the bible i was like <laughs> <laughs> anyway um anywho's my own personal thing this is this is not what we're going to talk about um okay so there, there's so many things that we can touch on on midnight mass but we don't have time guys so um What can we end on for mass? Amazing. Spectacular. Sad that yeah. the people who need to watch it will not watch Probably it. Probably won't. And will not get it. But yeah. or hope that the people who 
we think won't watch it will watch it out of rumors of pure outrage <laughs> and maybe get something of it. Have, but, like, I don't think there's been much. I haven't seen any yes. kind of outrage about, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's new, but I feel like it yeah. would have, we would have seen something already. Um, yeah, you'd think. I want I, I want it it's one of those things that I'm like make this mandatory like put this in schools like I know it's horror and there's like blood and guts and stuff like I, I know but <laughs> like put this in high schools make people watch this this is so important I I just I loved it I still don't yeah. love it as much as Hill House because I'm so connected to those characters mm -hmm. sure but it was amazing yeah yeah, I feel like Hill House, and I agree with that. I feel like Hill House you can rewatch yeah. multiple multiple times. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you can't rewatch uh, Midnight Mass, but it's fucking a lot, guys. It's, it's heavy. Just, it's, it's heavy. It's a yeah. lot. Like, and I watched all seven episodes in one day. That was a lot. <laughs> I did too. I, I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't stop myself. Um, seven episodes, guys. Each one named after one of the books in the Old Testament. Um, because that's not on the nose, Mike. <laughs> um, it does end with revelations appropriately. Um, I want to kiss him on the mouth for Midnight Mass. <laughs> I mean, like when the pandemic's over. But yeah, well, yeah, no. Oh, okay. So guys this has been the mike flanagan love fest uh thank you for coming <laughs> um no in, in all seriousness like we're we're just i i feel like most horror fans horror fans are um we we've reached a point where we we want smart intelligent horror like we're just expecting a little bit more than your standard just like ah um which there's plenty of those um so if you if you do just want like a classic scare there, there's a shit ton of stuff <laughs> i can't even talk um but um it's it's nice having a more intellectual and uh thoughtful spooky experience and um and mike's been great at uh, at serving those up so um definitely recommend you guys watching it and uh let us know if you do venture we'd love to hear your thoughts i feel like we've already talked about um at least the three of us we've had conversations about this for a uh, like a couple years now mm -hmm. um and i and i think this is definitely one of those things uh specifically for jams and i like uh the conjuring we'll we'll be able to talk about these um multiple times because there's just so much they're so rich um and when you rewatch them you see new things so I, I after probably a few weeks, maybe a few months, I don't know, I may rewatch Midnight Mass to see if I see something else, but it's gonna take me a bit because that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah. But in the meantime, I'm like literally make everyone you know watch it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. I've been like yelling at crews already. Cause it's not that scary. <laughs> honestly. No, it's, not. No. it's really not bad. It's pretty low on a scary scale. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the vamp looks like, um, well, you mentioned it looks like the, um, um, oh my God, what was the show the that you old, mentioned? Uh, what the, we do with the shadows. Yeah. What yeah. we do with the shadows. The vamp. He looks like the ancient one. <laughs> yeah. What was his name? What he does look like the ancient one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there, there's a particular, like Stephen King had, um, one of his little winged, oh my God, what was that show? Prague, help me. I'm sure you know. Um, uh, it, it very similar design, like almost spitting. Um, it was, it was, it's a Stephen King flick. Um, the um, exact same look for uh, for the the vamp. Was it the night shift? I can't remember. I genuinely can't remember. My brain. Thank you. Salem's lot. Salem's lot. <laughs> Looks exactly the same. Uh, so, so yeah, but he, he's the spookiest thing. Yeah. Um, everything else is pretty tame. So, oh, the dog thing. If you, if you have a thing against animal cruelty, episodes, the end of episode one 
end of episode two into three. Yeah. Be wary. You would yeah. have been warned. Yeah, I was upset. <laughs> yeah. Jams warned me so that I could warn my sister because my sister is more sensitive about that stuff than I am. But yeah. Yeah. Anywho. All right, guys. Um, our next stream will be on Monday for a brand new episode of our chat show, Curious Bites. We'll be sharing a ton of discoveries and distractions. So be sure to tune in at 5 p.m. Pacific right here on our Twitch. And... Um, on next Thursday, we have um, a couple of special guests. We won't name them right now just in case anyone falls through. But we will be talking about witchcraft and feminism. Sweet. So um, come back for that. Uh, Jam's special topic of witchcraft. Um, we also dropped a new uh, podcast episode, guys. So um, that dropped yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. And that was mm -hmm. us discussing uh, 90s teen rom-coms. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's on all your favorite pod players. Uh, make sure you uh, subscribe to those and leave us some stars. If you five stars. That would be great. Five stars. Five, specifically, five stars. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks, guys. Hello, it's the uh, ghost of uh, the oh, Curious stream. Oh no, it's the ghost of Rachel past. <laughs> We're actually going to kick things over to uh, a friend of ours, a new friend, uh, Little Pooh Bear. Um, <laughs> it's a Winnie the Pooh reference because her name is actually Winnie. And uh, she is also a fellow Canadian. So we're going to kick things over to Little Pooh Bear. Please give Winnie a follow if you're not following already. The raid messages are in the chat. So if you are a subscriber, you can copy and paste that first message. If you're not, you can copy and paste that second. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Foxy. Thanks for being. <laughs> being Aww. in general. Aww. <laughs> That's so sweet. Indeed. Okay. Going to start the raid. Subscribe or I'll haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new one hey, for October only. <laughs> hey, Rach. Do you want to do our outro so Jams can do her hand thing? <laughs> sure. <Thank> you. <laughs> Until we see you guys next time, be sure to keep wearing your mask. Get vaccinated if you can. Don't be a dick. And stay curious. Bye, everybody. Bye. It's that toss. The toss at the end of it where I'm like, it's not, that's not how it works. Sure it is. You just toss it away. Sure. <laughs>